shock to the world. Twitter broke down, Facebook broke down. Two, we want on your fantasy team because he's always gonna get your numbers. Like it's just, he's a guy that you wanna wanna like, but you just can't. He doesn't give you the opportunity to like him anymore. Hey everybody. Hi friends. Hey everybody. I don't know how to introduce this book. <laughs> hey guys. My name is Catherine and I'm super excited to start this vlog, mostly because I've been putting it off for, I feel like it's been years, but probably just a couple months, trying to decide whether I wanted to do a podcast or do a video or like add it to the blog that I already run. I just, so many decisions and finally I have landed on one and I'm super excited to start vlogging and just talking about sports because I talk about sports all day, every day. I like bombard my mother who doesn't really know anything about football with all of the stats because what else am I gonna do but talk about sports. So let's talk a little preseason football. Preseason football is like the appetizer to a meal for me. I love preseason football. I'm like the only person I know that gets excited for preseason football and there's a huge controversy about whether it should be two games or maybe preseason football just shouldn't exist at all and we should just go straight into the regular season. There are so many different perspectives but preseason football is like a little bit of insight and you get to see you know guys just coming into the league, rookies, you get to see what they have to offer. I think that's exciting. I remember a few years ago, I was watching preseason football and I saw this guy, Corey Clement, and I was like, he looks like he could be good. And I saw him a couple more times, a couple more reps, and I was like, this kid might be, this kid might be really good for us. Like this could be, and we were in like this weird space with running our running back situation, which I, I think we've kind of gotten out of, but we were in a weird space. So I was kind of excited about this promising new running back who was you know, having a pretty good showing in preseason. And lo and behold, Cl Corey Clement still plays for the Philadelphia Eagles. So look at me, I was hoping I would be right. <laughs> um, but I say all that to say that how exciting is that to like watch somebody grow in an organization and watch somebody grow at their craft. I think it's pretty cool. Everybody else may not have that same sentiment. Let's start with Ezekiel Elliott. He is the Dallas Cowboys running back. And I mean the Dallas Cowboys running back because whatever way Zeke goes, so do the Cowboys. He makes them so much better. So him withholding his services and possibly missing out on some regular season games is a little concerning to the football community. Those of us who play fantasy, Cowboys fans, and anybody in between who just likes to watch good football because Ezekiel Elliott makes them exciting to watch. He's just a great runner. He trucks over everybody. So he's holding out, he wants to get a contract. Jerry Jones has been on the record saying that, you know, they he feels like he's gonna get a deal done and it's going to be all fine, but he is currently operating like Zeke is going to miss some regular season games. Their first game is September 8th um, against the New York Giants who have another phenomenal running back, Saquon Barkley. Um, but it's against the Giants and that's gonna be, it's actually probably gonna be a pretty good matchup even though the Giants are, Giants are, struggling in all sense of the word everybody but Saquon but either way they're thinking that he's going to miss the first couple of games and I believe that the first couple of games if I'm not mistaken the first game I know is the Giants the second game I want to say is the Redskins they have a couple of division games to start the season so those are those are games that count twice you don't want to lose those and if Zeke Elliott is not present on your football team to play games and you know get you first downs gonna be a long road ahead to make it to the playoffs even but who thinks the Cowboys are making it to the playoffs I sure don't so let's talk about Andrew Luck Andrew Luck is 29 years of age Andrew Luck just announced his retirement from the NFL at 29 years of age it shocked the world all social media platforms just broke down just overloaded with a bombardment of these emojis he didn't announce it himself originally. It, it's hard to tell like how, how the news came about. It was, it's been reported that Andrew Luck had let the team know and he let the organization know and that he was, you know, going to retire. But Twitter and social media blew up because Adam Schefter posted that Andrew Luck was retiring and it just like shattered worlds. Um, and it was in the middle of a preseason game. Andrew Luck is standing on the sidelines with his team as this tweet goes out and everybody is talking about Andrew Luck retiring and there he is just standing on the sidelines. It's, it's kind of like a, a crazy thing to see. Um, but 
Andrew Luck goes to walk out after the game is over and all of the fans in the stadium start booing him. There's, you can hear the boos. There are so many clips just on all of social media because it was blowing up of Andrew Luck just getting booed, bombarded with a bunch of boos. Um, and Andrew Luck, it's been reported that he's like one of the nicest guys on the planet. Like you can smack the crap out of him on the football field, of course, and he'll be like, good hit, man. I don't know how many times I saw that. I saw um, sound FX random clips of him saying, good hit, man, good hit, man, after somebody knocked him out. <laughs> It's insane. He's such a nice guy. Why would you boo him? And you know, fans, they don't always know, like, fans don't really necessarily, and I think this has a lot to do with, like, people's reactions to him retiring at this age and the circumstances in which he retired. Um, a lot of times we don't understand what's going on in somebody else's head or what's going on with somebody else's body. Like, you just, that's not something that you can, like, fully take on and understand. And he had mentioned in a conference after, after the announcement was made, he was saying that it just to be in a constant cycle of trying to rehab yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally is just, it's weighing on him. So do you blame the guy for wanting to retire? I just think the booze were a little bit much. It was just too much. I get it. He could have retired at the end of the season, but what if he had gotten even more hurt? He could have retired at the end of last season, but maybe he just wasn't sure on the decision that he was going to make. That's, that's a huge decision to decide to retire from the thing that you've given your life to do. You don't just make that decision in a split second. That's not how that works. But I mean, we're hopefully the Colts can get it together because they got a lot of decisions to make. They have a lot of positions to like fill in and the AFC South has changed in landscape, let me tell you. So the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to preseason news is Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown is so frustrating because he's a great receiver. Like he's a receiver that you, one would want on your football team for the production on the field. Two, would want on your fantasy team because he's always gonna get you numbers. Like it's just, he's a guy that you wanna wanna like, but you just can't. He doesn't give you the opportunity to like him anymore. He's so concerned with being this like huge star that it overshadows all of everything else. Dude, you're here to play football, so play football. And you'll hear from, t it's reported from all types of teammates that he is just like a great guy on the team, but everything else that he does off the field and on social media just like, it diminishes that in a way. So he's been in the news. Uh, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, all of his beef with Ben, he almost got traded to Buffalo, like all of these things were happening. And then he gets to go to Oakland with their new $10 billion head coach, John Gruden, Lord. That's an exaggeration, it's not 10 billion, it's close enough. Um, but he gets to, he goes to Oakland and you know, there's Derek Carr who's their quarterback who uh, he's like hit or miss sometimes, but if he can get Antonio Brown the ball, they could be pretty good. Um, so Antonio Brown gets to Oakland and then helmet gate happens. Here's what happens with the helmets. So in an effort to make the game more safe, the NFL constructed these new helmets. So there's like 30 helmets that you could pick from or something, and they're all different from the old helmets. So those old helmets you would not be able to wear anymore. Like you couldn't get on the field with these helmets. So Antonio Brown and all of his wisdom decided that he wants to keep his old helmet. So he tried all these antics where he showed up with a horribly painted, like uh, a horribly painted helmet that just it looked bad it was not the helmet that he was supposed to be wearing let's just say that um but he comes in with this helmet to practice it's just it's like all these little child antics that he's displaying and then he goes and he tries to like he's filing grievance after grievance he gets shot down for both and then another story comes out about how he went to cryotherapy and he like got frostbite on his feet because he wasn't wearing the proper attire it's just like you are a grown man who plays a professional sport. These are just, it's superfluous things that we're talking about in the middle of preseason at the start of the 100 NFL season. And these are the things that you are going through. Get it together, Antonio. Get it together. I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support. And I'd love to hear feedback from you guys about what you guys think I should talk about. 
Otherwise, it's just going to be me talking about the things that I want to talk about all day. And that's not a lot of fun for y'all. Um, but I'd love to hear your feedback and I'd love to hear your takes on the different things that I talked about today. And of course, whatever happens to the regular season. And I'll see you guys later.